Part 2. My task for this video, improve the practical experiment for producing an open alpha source, ideally making it simpler, faster and or resulting in more polonium deposition. A brief recap of the first video, several fragments of uranium mineral were immersed in hydrochloric acid for two days. Then a one square centimeter silver plate was added to the hydrochloric acid uranium mineral solution preheated to 80 degrees C. After a two hour deposition period, it could be measured resulting in 18 becquerel of polonium 210. Well, surely there is room for improvement, so here we go again. As a note, this video is intended for students who have chosen the nuclear chemistry practical course at the University of Cologne. No one else should replicate what is shown here. We are not only working with radioactive materials, but we are also producing radioactively contaminated acid waste and are working with a highly radiotoxic element that is the polonium source. Now back to uranium minerals, I'm running two parallel approaches this time. To appear more scientific, we are weighing the minerals, 14.75 grams and 14.21 grams. Since we do not know the uranium content or the type of mineral, this information is only moderately helpful. Okay, behind letting them soak in hydrochloric acid for two days wasn't really planned, it was just simply over the weekend and the two hour deposition time was just a guess from last time. Now I've made six plates in one go. Instead of letting the uranium mineral soak in the hydrochloric acid for two days, I heated it directly with the silver plate to 80 degrees C. I adjusted the 75 C to 80 C off camera. What can you expect from the theoretical part? Results of the six experimental approach practical tips for conducting this experiment, what happens during this experiment, evaluation including literature research, disposal and outlook. Here are the results. Polonium number one is one hour of deposition in 80 degrees C warm hydrochloric acid. Now we can see three peaks. This makes sense as in the natural occurrence uranium radium series, three polonium isotopes are present. Polonium 210, Polonium 218 and Polonium 214. This ultimately gave us 48 becquerels of Polonium 210 plus one becquerel of Polonium 214. Polonium 2, exactly the same thing, but here we simply swapped the plates. This means the polonium came from the same beaker. I wanted to see how well I could recycle the same approach. In spectrum 3, you could see that two peaks are missing, polonium 214 and polonium 218. This was due to some unfortunate timing. I couldn't measure the polonium immediately after removing it from the solution and was forced to wait from Tuesday until Friday to measure it. This experiment had a two hour deposition time during which I wanted to find out if collecting for two hours at once or twice for one hour each would make a difference. While the count suggests that collecting polonium for two hours continuously is not optimal, I will argue the following. We are dealing with a thin layer of polonium on silver and we know that silver tends to tarnish over time forming a sulfide layer. My guess here is that the difference in counts wouldn't be so high if I hadn't had to wait for such a long time to measure. Whether it's an oxide or sulfur layer, who knows? We are not even talking about complete layers. These are such small amounts that the polonium layer over the entire plate isn't even one atom thick. Number four was again from the same beaker as the two one hour plates and here we see more counts even though I also had to wait for three days for them to measure. I stored three and four in a snap cap as I wanted to test this one versus two hour collection time. Honestly, I just think that the mineral from the beaker one where polonium one, two and four were was just containing more uranium and therefore more polonium which could deposit on the surface with the dissolved hydrochloric acid. Polonium 5 and 6 had extremely long collection times, so from Friday 6 p.m. to Monday 10 a.m. The plates were in hydrochloric acid the whole time. This time, however, the temperature during the deposition was not at 80 degrees C, but at room temperature. It's quite clear that this was a failure. During the ongoing experimental course, further experimentation was conducted. Group 3 let it soak in 80 degrees C for two hours and collected for two hours as well. They also obtained about 80 becquerels of polonium, but the uranium mineral used weighted 9.448 grams. This is the same mineral that was used by all other groups in the same beaker. Coincidentally, all groups left their silver plate in for longer than one hour and none of the groups were able to measure polonium to 18 and polonium to 14. In conclusion, I also attempted to bring the uranium 
HCL solution to 80 degrees C only once at the silver plate and then turned off the heating and came back in about one to two hours and that did not significantly affect the polonium activity. This greatly simplifies the supervision of the experiment as you do not have to deal with 80 degrees C hot hydrochloric acid radioactive stuff. A possible source of errors in this experiment, very important, before measurement the plate must be dried. Simply dab it gently with some tissue, otherwise the water will shield a huge part of the alphas. Another thing, silver plates can be reused as long as they still show this metallic luster. If they sparkle like this, this mystery layer must be removed by forehand just by using some 4 molar warm HCl that will do the trick. Unfortunately, I cannot say you what this mystery layer is as I don't know. Now that we know why some experiment might not have worked, why should it work at the first place? Why do we use uranium ore instead of polonium ore? There is no polonium ore. Uranium ores are so incredibly old that all radionuclides of the uranium radium series are in radioactive equilibrium. The activity of uranium-238 should be equivalent to the activity of polonium-210. Of course, the uranium-actinium series is also present, but let's just ignore the 0.7% for now. Our best guess still is the same as from the first video. Polonium-4 plus reacts with the silver in strongly acidic environment as a part of redox reaction and forms metallic polonium on the surface. This explanation is based on standard potentials and intelligent guessing, to be honest. But this video is dedicated about producing measurement values more efficiently. So how much polonium is actually in the uranium ore? The numbers vary widely and hardly anyone cares. So there has been little research on it and you can count the people who have tried to separate polonium from uranium ore on one hand to be honest. Wikipedia says that practically 30 micrograms per ton of pitch blender have been realized. In Pierre Curie's original paper it is described that there should be about 0.04 milligrams or 40 micrograms per ton of pitch blender and it's remarkable that these 30 micrograms practically are quite close to the theoretical value of the 40 micrograms. The catch? Wikipedia itself does not provide a source for these 30 micrograms per ton. And when writing a protocol for this experiment, you need to cite a source. Therefore, we should stick to the 40 micrograms per ton for the calculations. So let's assume our 9.44 gram mineral is pure pitch blend. So 40 micrograms per ton of uranium ore would mean 40 micrograms per ton times 9.44 grams divided by 1 million grams per ton equals 0 0.000377 micrograms or 377 picograms of polonium that should be contained in the 9.44 grams of our ore. Let's say we obtained about 18 becquerels from these 9.44 grams. To calculate these 18 becquerels, the efficiency of the alpha spectrometer must have been determined correctly. There's another video for that already online. However, the old alpha spectrometer was used. The values are no longer valid for the new alpha spectrometer. Also, all spectra I showed were made on the old alpha spectrometer. 18 becquerels divided by the specific activity of 166 becquerel per picogram is 0.108 picograms. But there should be 377 picograms. So that would mean that our yield is only 0.029%. So this is sufficient for our discussion. Deviation from the 100% are quite obvious. We did not use pitch blender, but rather some low grade uranium containing mineral, which probably consists of 99% silicon dioxide. We only dissolved the very top layer with hydrochloric acid and then only the polonium that was really on the surface could have been dissolved and therefore deposited. Disposal, let it dry and the assistant will take care of it. Since I am this person, I will naturally continue to do some chemistry with this waste. Um, to make some future videos. As a little teaser, we pushed this whole deposition time story to the extreme and held a clean silver plate in a room temperature solution for only 5 minutes. The result was a spectrum with 4510 counts. So even 5 minutes of deposition times are better than 3 days. But not as good as 1 hour. So it remains exciting. Let's see what we will do for part 3. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.